Guse. Uh, I'm Professor Buachi Ejei, the CEO and Medical Director of the Focus Orthopedic Hospital in Ghana. And this video is going to demonstrate the spring-loaded halo traction system that we have used here at this hospital and how it is set up, applied for a walker, for wheelchair and also in bed. Uh, so enjoy the video and comments will be appreciated. Uh, so this is a demonstration of the spring-loaded traction system used at the Focus Orthopedic Hospital and Glenn, the uh, Director of Orthotics and Prosthetic Special Surgery is going to take us through the components of the system, how it is assembled and how it is applied. Glenn, go ahead. So this is a spring-loaded traction system and it consists of a bar with two horizontally mounted springs, a common attachment piece, and a series of pulleys here. So we hook the traction unit itself to a halo or to a ring on a halo. It allows the patient to rotate, move their head in any direction, and then once we have this on the patient's uh, attached to the patient's halo, we can pull the string here and initiate load and lock it in place. what happens is I pull it down here as I load it lock it in place and I get the load on the traction system so what we're talking about today is how do we determine how much load is actually being applied to the patient's head so what we've created is a scale set up in pounds and we read the load on the traction system by looking at where the travel is of the pulley system above. Okay. So essentially what happens is I put this scale behind the traction system and mount it to the horizontal bar and the upper part of the bar should read zero because there's no weight on it now. This is freely moving when there's no weight on it that should be zero. So what I would essentially do is mark that spot, drill a hole in here, there's already a hole pre-drilled. I would put a, a screw in here to hold this in place so that when the, when the traction unit has no load on it, it's set at zero with the upper bar. Now, I've done that and set it up with a scale. I would go in here now, screw this in place on the bar. And now that my scale's in place, when there's no load on it, the upper bar matches the zero on my scale. Now, if I want to double check my calibration, I've known over the years, I set up my scale so that when I put five pounds of load, which is a five pound traction bag, and when I lock this in place and I put five pounds on there, it goes to the five pound hash mark on my scale. So I know my calibration is correct because I'm at five pounds. I got a five pound load and I know it's a five pound mark. So we're always reading off the top of this bar here. I can check it further. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. I can check it further if I want to turn around and add Put a 10 pound bag on there. Now I've got a 10 pounds on here. I should be at the 10 pound on there. And now I've got my scale and I'm at 10 pounds. So my scale set up where it's at 10 pounds. So I know zero, I know five, I know 10. If I want to do it further, I can add another five pounds here. 
which will give me 15 pounds. Back on. And I should be at the 15 pound mark. But, oops, I'm sorry. My column here, which is right there. I should be right at 15 pounds, and that's where I am. So when I take all these weights off again, it's back in place, right to where it should be. It should be right at zero, which is right where it is right there. As in the previous uh, video, we showed how the system is uh, set up and calibrated, and Glenn did that. And this is actually the uh, the spring-loaded traction system adapted uh, after the Texas Scottish Rite uh, hospital system, where it was first uh, uh, used. Uh, so Glenn will go through the different components of the system, so you're familiar with the pieces that are used in this uh, apparatus, Glenn. There, the spring-loaded traction system is mounted on a, a traction bar and it has two horizontal springs with a connector in the middle and in the center of the connector there's a spring mounted. So what happens is when you pull down, load is applied to both of these springs. This unit has been calibrated so that the upper bar is at zero degree weight on it when there's no weight applied to the unit. Distally there's a second pulley system which mounts to just above the patient's halo. And so essentially you have a three pulley system here so that when you pull on the load cable the three different pulleys operate and as more load is applied springs pull down and load the unit itself. And once you pull on this cable and you get the desired amount of load without just pull the, the string over it locks into a wedge system here and maintains the amount of load put on the, the traction unit with the patient, which we will show you a little bit later. But the spring loaded traction unit is basically two horizontal springs, a connector bar, and two pulleys mounted on it with a swivel and a care binder which connects to the top of the patient's halo. In the back here we take the spring loaded traction system and we've actually created two, horizontal, uh, two vertical bars here that are mounted to the wheelchair with a cross member and this gives us this gives us adjustability so we can adjust the position of the traction unit forwards and posterior by sliding this bar one direction or another. Just loosen up the traction system and we can slide it forwards or backwards to position the, the center of the spring load traction system over the patient's head. So if we want to shift the patient forward, we can slide it forward. If we want to shift the patient back, we can slide it back. We can do the same thing left to right we can loosen either the bar here or the bar here in the front and we can slide the position of the traction unit left or right to match the position of the patient in the wheelchair. So actually if we wanted to pull the patient to the left or to the right we could position the spring load traction system either centered over the seat or to the left or to the right to put the patient where we want them to be. So you have adjustability left and right, forwards and backwards in a spring-loaded traction system here to load the patient's up, load the patient's head. And again, this piece would come down, clip to the halo, you pull here to, to get the amount of load you want, and lock it in place. Perfect. And this is all calibrated with the weight. Load traction system has already been calibrated to zero here. The cross bar is right at zero on the calibration. We have the whole line system set up here to work the spring-loaded traction system. This crossbar is mounted. To a, to a second piece here that allows us to slide this unit forwards and backwards in the chair. Here we have the center just about over the center of the chair here. Depending on where the patient's head in the chair, and we'll see that in a minute. But that adjustment can be made by loosening and tightening this, this, this traction and sliding the bar forwards or backwards to change its position in relation to the chair. If we come to the back, we can do the same thing here by loosening the traction unit here or the spring load traction system and sliding side to side to keep this centered over the chair. The traction pull centered over the chair. 
these two uprights are basically hose clamped to the frame of the wheelchair. It's a very simple alignment system. This is not a very heavy patient. If you had a bigger system for a heavier child, you may in fact want to have these, these vertical bars anchored to the cross piece here on the, on the frame itself. But for this particular position, this is fine. They're just hose clamped to the uprights. Okay, go ahead. So what we hear is we loosen the traction system up for our patient. We have him sit in the chair. Have a seat. Sit down, okay? Get him comfortable in the chair. Hook up our traction system. And now pull the string here to tighten it up. So right now I have zero, zero degrees, zero pounds of lift on the patient here. We want to put 10 pounds of traction on. So while he's sitting there, I pull the string down here and load it at 10 pounds and then lock it in place. Sometimes you want to go a little bit past and lock it in place. So now he's sitting in the chair and he has 10 pounds of load on the traction system. Alignment. Alignment. Okay. Now, in this particular case, the patient's sitting way back in the chair. We want him to sit more forward. We can have him sit more forward or we can align this anterior posterior or front to back to be over the patient's head. So this is pulling him forward a little bit. So what we may want to do is take the pressure off the traction system. Slide this back over his head. Now I can pull this more tightly. Put my 10 pounds of traction on there. And now it's centered and pulling directly up. Side to side, the alignment looks pretty good. It's centered over the patient's head and then over the chair. Now there's something worth noting around the front here. We have a look. If we look at our, 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 the amount of traction weight we have on there is 10 pounds now. Let me give a little clearer view, we're at 10 yeah. pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what we find happens here, if we step back and get a little broader view, as the patient sits forward or sits back or leans up or leans down, this will change slightly. One pound, one, basically a pound one direction or another. So if he's rolling along and hits a bump on this, the spring will bounce a little bit like this. Unlike a dead weight, when you have weights on a string, the load is very sudden. It's all on or all off. With this spring loaded system, it's a much softer transition, so you don't put nearly as much stress on the halo pins as you would if you have a dead weight. When you hit a bump, it's completely unloaded and completely reloaded. With the spring, you always have a little amount of tension all the time, so it doesn't put as so much wear and tear. So now as he, as he rolls along or as he moves around the chair, this will move a little bit up and down. That's okay. It's not an exact science. And then automatically adjust the position he is in the chair. Now what happens with our children here a lot, this is sort of a neat trick that they taught me. If he wants to take it off once the traction is set, what these children normally do is stand up. Stand up. When he stands up, automatically that's unloaded. So what the patient will do a lot of times is just reach up with their own hands and just connect this. And go on their way. Now if this hasn't changed any, when he comes back, he'll just hook himself back up into this. Sit down. And then when he sits back down, he's right 10 pounds again. So patients, don't, once this is set, a lot of times they won't even adjust it. They will just stand up, the tension's off, they just connect their halo, go do what they have to do, whether it's restroom or eat or whatever. They come back, put it back in the chair, hook it up and sit down, and they're right where they want to be. It's Glenn Garrison again from Focus Hospital in Accra, Ghana. More recently, we've taken the spring-loaded traction systems that we use for wheelchairs and walkers and applied them to the bed. But the bed has some unique, is a unique situation for us and we have to make some adaptations for the bed. The main problem is if we lay the patient flat in the bed and we put a traction unit on it, the traction, the spring of a traction or any kind of weight on it would slide the patient up the bed. And so normally you would have to put a counterforce around the pelvis or the feet to hold the patient, the counterforce to keep them from sliding up the bed. We don't really want to do that. Uh, we're trying to do as minimal um, 
uh, loading of the patient as possible. So what we do is we incline the back of the bed 30 to 45 degrees. So the inclination of the bed is in that 30 to 45 degree range, and then you apply traction. The, the traction itself would have to slide the patient up the bed, so we don't have to worry about them sliding up the bed. Gravity is going to hold the patient down, so we get the amount of traction we need. The other thing with our normal protocol is at, in the bed, we normally use half the amount of traction we would use when the patient is standing and walking around. So normally this patient uses 40 to 41 degrees of traction. Lying down, we would use 20 degrees of, of, of uh, 20 pounds of, of traction. So right here, we actually have her right at 25 pounds of traction. So the main thing is, is to make sure when you have the patient lying down, is that you have the traction, the pull of the traction line parallel, not on the pillow or the bed, but par in a parallel plane to the bed, to the inclined bed. The second thing is, the traction itself needs to be rotated so that the pins where the spring are mounted are perpendicular to the bed so that the springs don't pop off the carriage here. So the two things you got to remember, three things you got to remember, is the bed needs to be inclined 30 to 45 degrees, half the amount of traction, the, the, and the pull of the traction has to be parallel to the alignment of the bed, and you rotate so that the pins that anchor the springs are perpendicular to the surface of the bed. And that's the only thing we do differently with the bed traction, the spring load traction units in the bed. Thanks. Smile. Okay, we're going to demonstrate the traction system that is applied to a walker for ambulation. Go ahead, Glenn. Okay. Now, in this particular case, the same rules apply that apply to a wheelchair. Sausage fingers don't always work. But this, this unit here has been calibrated so that when there's no weight on it, it's at zero. Correct. And actually, here's a little thing, a little pointer we might want to do. I normally like these pins to be horizontal to the to the ground. So in this particular case, I take this and turn it. So that now they're horizontal to the ground. That's very important. So it doesn't slide off. So it doesn't slide off. So the pencil falls. So you want these to uh, be parallel with the surface. Right. Okay. So this is zero. It's calibrated at zero on the top. It's hard to see for hearing. Hard to see. Okay. So now when the patient steps in, now well, the walker frame itself is basically Zimmer or TMI traction bars that we bolted together and we've got some ca caster wheels and drilled holes in here to put wheels on the unit but the rest of them are standard traction parts just applied and put together and we have plans on how to do that with a, so it comes up with two uprights and a horizontal bar okay uh, hey, get in. and then here this mechanism with the traction unit this forward aft bar and the other anchor here, the, the spring load traction bar and the forward aft bar are the same as we have on the wheelchair, except this time it's mounted to a crossbar on this walking frame. Now we, we, we find we have to project this up taller because as you have taller patients, the traction is going to bump into this bar here, so we have to have this extension to make it taller. So when the patient gets here, just like we do on the wheelchair, we hook it up. Come back to the front. How much? How many pounds? 41 pounds. So all I'm going to do now is pull this down here. So I get to 41 pounds of traction. In this particular case, if we're 40, we're okay. Okay. And you see you're at 40 pounds there. Now an interesting thing happens when you sit at 40 pounds there. As she bends her knees, which they will do, bend your knees, it loads even more. If she goes up on her tippy toes like this, the load is less. You're not going to go up on your tippy toes like this. As she walks... They're going to tiptoes and hold it. There you go. And you see, when she does that, she's only at, she's at 30 on her tippy toes. Uh -huh. All right, when she, when she stands flat feet, foot, feet flat, 
But there she's she's just under 40, and then bend your knees. That should go to 45 pounds. Bend your knees and hold it. You see there, she's at 45 pounds. Okay. So what we normally do is set up the weight when she's standing up straight. Stand up straight, straighten your knees. And that's where we set the load we want on it. But as patients go up and down when they walk, yeah. the load will vary on the on the actual unit. Yeah, that will open. Okay. Now we she can hold the crossbars either here or we put two more bars here in the front so she can hold it here and make it easier for her to hold on when she walks. So she can grab the bars here. As this unit comes further forward, she can grab the bars there. Let's see you walk. You're a model, you didn't know that, did you? And she can control the unit as she walks. Can you straighten it out? There you go. Let's go, let's go for a walk. Let's go quickly. Now when she walks towards you, you'll notice that this right here is constantly moving. It's not static. It's, it's, it's going back towards Dr. Dr. B. What's this, Dr. B? How this is always moving here. It doesn't stay in one spot. Yeah. Okay? Now the other thing we can do with these if we wanted to, for her comfort. She likes it, we can turn them in. And we can turn these arms in or we can leave them straight. We can lower them, we can raise them, depending on what her comfort level is for the walker she's using. So we can usually pull this out of the way. talking about? Mm -hmm. oh, quick, quick, let's go, come on. Go for a walk. You don't like this? No good? This one is a little high maintenance, Dr. B. Okay, let's go, come on. Okay, let's go, guys. Let's go. Just gone through the uh, apparatus, the spring-loaded uh, trash system that we've used in hundreds of patients with excellent results. And you see here a group of patients who have the apparatus mounted for them in walkers. And uh, it has done remarkably well in terms of getting uh, these uh, severe deformities uh, appropriately corrected prior to surgical intervention.
So if anyone is interested in the system, please contact uh, us at Focus Orthopedic Hospital or Glenn Garrison at uh, Glenn Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. Glenn is at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. Or you can find Dr. Boachin. Or find go it. to <laughs> orthofocus.org. Ortho O R T H O focus F O C O S dot O R G where you will be able to get more information on the systems set up and function. Thank you for joining us. So hello Bob Wachi, the president and founder of Focus and the CEO of the Focus As you just said uh, from today's narration, he's just gone through the uh, apparatus, the spring loaded uh, traction system that we've used in hundreds of patients with excellent results and you see here a group of patients who have the apparatus mounted for them in walkers and uh, it has done remarkably well in terms of getting uh, these uh, severe deformities uh, appropriately corrected prior to surgical intervention. So if anyone is interested in the system please contact uh, us at Focus Orthopedic Hospital or Glenn Garrison at uh, Glenn Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. Glenn is at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. Or you can find Dr. Boachi and he'll find go it. to orthofocus.org. <laughs> Ortho, O R T H O, focus, F O C O S, dot O R G, where you will be able to get more information on the systems set up and function. Thank you for joining us.